I wish I had. I tried recently to get my ghost hunting group into that building, but I could never track down the people that own it now. Obviously, uh, a, some sort of a company in New York City owns it, and they're going to make it into offices and a dining establishment. I have a feeling they're going to be sorry. <laughs> I don't think Madeline was evil in any way whatsoever. She was just sad, needing help, and called out to three other women for help, and we didn't help her. The paranormal chose me. I didn't choose it. And that's something I'd like to make clear. I, I feel like that God has actually gifted me with an ability to communicate or to have one, just one foot in that door I'm really, I'm not a full-fledged spirit medium or a psychic. I have a little bit of talent. But when I was a child, very young age, I was able to see spirits. I still remember very clearly seeing an older man that would walk up and down the halls in our, well, the hall in our tiny little house. Scare the crap out of me. Just the fact that he was there. He wasn't supposed to be there in the middle of the night when it was just me and my mom home alone. And I used to be able to see people's auras until I hit puberty and that ability went away. I could tell when people were possessed too, which was very unpleasant because the entities in them saw that I saw them. And I've had some extremely, extremely frightening and unpleasant things happen to me as a child because of that. So this isn't new to me. I'm not somebody that just suddenly decided at a slumber party to start doing this. I decided to do it because, like I said, the paranormal had already chosen me. So, whether you did anything wrong or not, no. Who would know how to handle that? Unless they're a seasoned ghost hunter or a seasoned medium or a psychic. Most average normal people would not know how to handle that. Why did he choose you? That's a good question. I'm not sure why he would choose you. There had to be some reason. Maybe he had tried lots of other people and nobody else could see him. I think you're very kind-hearted to follow him. And I'm curious about the details of that. You're going to have to fill me in on the details. I'm also curious what your real name is. Georgia boy. Gotta have a real name. I hope that he doesn't start bothering you again just because you went to visit his grave. I'll tell you what, if he does, you need to talk to him. And tell him what year it is. Tell him. You know, brother, you've been dead for a long time. The man that killed you is long gone. God has taken care of him. You got good things waiting for you and there's no reason to stay here. And pray for him like you would for a living person. Ask that he be delivered. Don't just ask that he leave you alone. Pray that the man will find his peace. To me, that's the only way to do it. There are people reaching out for help. They just have to do it in unusual ways because they are minus the physical. Now, as far as you getting a sick feeling at that cemetery, that bothers me. Because it sounds like maybe you were under attack. And I've had that happen to me. It's the worst feeling. Being in a cemetery late at night, standing in front of the wrong grave. Oh, yeah. And I brought other people there, and they've had similar experiences the same spot. It's not good. I suggest anytime you go to some place like that, when you get back in the car, you very firmly state that nobody's allowed to come with you and anybody that's in the car needs to get out of the car and go back to the resting place. Because sometimes they will come home with you. And it may not be your soft-spoken man, it may be someone else. And it makes me wonder why he was pointing to that one, that one monument, which is a cool looking monument, by the way. I'd love to roam around that cemetery and take pictures. I love cemeteries, just for the history of them. 
really makes me wonder who that person was. There's got to be some kind of records. Maybe if you get to the Hall of Records, look up death certificates, newspapers. There should have been newspapers. I don't know if they're on microfish or not. Microfilm, microfish. But yeah, you were very brave for going back and getting that footage. I know you didn't do it for me, you did it for yourself. And I think that's really cool, but I appreciate you sharing it with me. It meant a lot to me. Now and then I lose my way. Bye, darling. Using mm -hmm. words to try to say what I feel. Yeah. Love is real. Oh, love is real. Ooh. I'm my